right, so we are going to finish up 2.3 today. So 2.3 was the second and first derivative test. So what I want to talk about today is the second derivative test. I need to sound this out here. Derivative. Um, I don't know if I can spell that right. I did not. Oh, yeah, I did. Okay, good. Hey, I'm a math teacher, right? I think I've said that several times in these. Um, so I want to talk about the second derivative test today. And I want to show you a couple of examples. for, And this will go along with um, kind of our first derivative test here. So uh, remember what the second derivative test gave us. So remember um, when we have a function. So let's just draw a function here. Maybe that does something like this. We'll get a little bit better at this. And remember what the second derivative told us. So the second derivative, in this case, I would have an inflection point right here. And um, all th over here, we know that this guy, we learned this from 2.1 and 2.2, that we're concave down. So what does that mean? That means that f double primed of x is negative or is less than zero. And over here, we're concave up, right? So we're concave up. And this tells me that the second derivative then, if it's positive, that implies that we're concave up. And this point right here is what we call an inflection point because it changes concavity at that point. So if you notice here, what does the second derivative have to do with maximums and minimums? Well, you can see that right here we have a relative or a local max. And down here we have a local min. And so the interesting thing about this is Whoa, just pretend that said local. <laughs> um, the interesting thing about this is if you notice when I have a maximum, my function is going to be concave down. It must be, right? For it to be the largest point, I have to have it concave down. Everything has to go below it. And then for a minimum, I'm concave up. So what we can see is if we have a max, then I know that the second derivative at that point must be less than zero. I must be concave down, right? So I must be less than zero. And to have a min, my second derivative must be greater than zero. That's basically what the second derivative test tells us. So let's write this down um, a little more nicely. So the second derivative test, and we'll use it to find maximum and minimums. Sometimes the second derivative test is a lot easier than the first derivative test. Sometimes it doesn't give you enough information, or sometimes the second derivative is maybe a little too complicated to take the derivative of. So we wouldn't want to use the second derivative test. But for right now, um, we are going to do ones where we would. So first off, I want to start off again with letting a be a critical number. Because remember, let me get this written down, <laughs> of my function f of x. Remember, my maximum or minimums, right, those purple dots right there can only occur when my derivative is zero, when I have a horizontal tangent. So again, what does that mean? This means that f prime of a is equal to zero. So just like with the first derivative test, our first step with the second derivative test will be to find the critical numbers. Okay, so number one, if f double primed if the second derivative evaluated at this number a is less than zero, then f of x has a local maximum at a. Remember, that doesn't tell you what the actual maximum value is. We have to plug that into the function to be able to determine that. Okay? Likewise, so remember, this less than zero, that's negative, that means I'm concave down. That would make sense then that that's why I have a max. If the second derivative evaluated at a is greater than zero, then we have a minimum. Oh, my handwriting today. Do I say that every time? I'm going to pretend you guys are talking back to me. <laughs> Has a local min. Because it's a little weird to be in my office by myself, laughing at my own jokes talking to my computer, but that's okay. Um, all right, so here's what the second derivative test tells us again, that if we are less than zero, that means I'm con, think about that, it means I'm concave down, so I have a max. If I'm greater than zero, what does that tell me? That my function is concave up at that point, and that means I have a minimum. All right, what's, what's another option? I know you're saying it, but Sarah, what if 
f double primed of a is equal to zero. If f double prime is equal to zero, the test is inconclusive. This makes you very sad. Not super sad, though, because you can't give up in mathematics, right? So the test is inconclusive. So what we would, we would do on that case is then we would just go back to the first derivative test. Okay? So let's, let's do an example here because that's why I know that's why you're here. All right, so for example, I am actually going to, let's see, let's find, um, I want to see, I, I have an example here, but I don't think this will be the best example for, well, let's do the one that we did in the last section. So let's use the second derivative test. to determine the local extrema of the function f of x equals, this is the one we did before, um, x cubed minus 3x, but I would like to do this now for you using the second derivative test. I'm going to put here also determine Intervals of concavity and any inflection points. Okay? Because if we're going to take the der second derivative, we might as well go all out and find everything we can. All right, so let's use the second derivative test to determine the local extrema of the function x cubed minus 3x. Also determine intervals of concavity and any inflection points. This is what a test question will look like. Okay, something like this. I'll force you to use the second derivative test. So let's start off. So the first thing we need to do is we need to find our critical numbers. So remember, oh, I don't know why this. So remember here, what, it, what do I have to have? I have to have A being a critical number. Once I find the critical numbers, then I plug them in the second derivative. So even though we're doing the second derivative test, what do I have to find before I can actually do the second derivative test? I have to find where my first derivative is zero. I have to find where, where I have those horizontal tangents, which, I always do that. Um, which is okay because we've already done this. We did this in the last video, but just in case we forgot, oh, I guess we're going purple now. That'll work. What is the derivative of this function? It's 3x squared minus 3, which was, remember we factored that 3 out and we got x squared minus 1, and we set that equal to 0. So what do we find? We found, look at that last video if you're not sure what's happening here. So these are our critical numbers, okay? And now what do I want to do with these? Now, so remember with the first derivative what we did. We made this little number line with the negative 1 and the 1, and I had to go through and test. Here's what's so nice about the second derivative. So now I'm going to take the second derivative of this function. How do we take the second derivative? I just take the derivative of the first derivative, and that would give me 6x, okay? And now what the second derivative tells you to do is to actually take these critical values and plug them into the second derivative and see what the sign is. Is it positive or is it negative? So I'm going to take, <laughs> now I'm back to green, f double primed of negative 1, okay? That would be 6 times negative 1, which is a negative 6. And this is what I like to do here. That means I'm less than 0. And then what I'll tell myself is, okay, what does that mean about my graph? That means I'm concave down. And then I leave myself a little note. That means I have a max. That is not my answer. That's just what I'm going to leave myself a note of. And then f uh, double primed of 1, of 1, Sarah? of 1 <laughs> is 6 times 1, which is 6. Again, I don't really care that this number is 6. All I care about is that it's positive, because if it's positive, if it's greater than 0, that tells me I'm concave up, and that tells me I have a min, which is what I believe we found last time. Okay, so part of my answer then here is I have a local max of, what is my max going to be? Well, I'm going to take f of negative 1, and what do we find that to be? So I'm going to take f of negative 1, I'm going to put it in here, remember. And so that'd be negative 1 plus 3, so that's 2, and that occurs at x equals negative 1. This is how you need to write your solutions. I have a local min of, and if I had more room, I would be doing this vertically, right? f of 1, which we found to be a negative 2 at 
x equals 1. You don't have to put the f of, I'm just kind of showing you how I'm getting the 2 and the negative 2, but what is my local max? It's 2. What is my local min? It's negative 2. This is very important because the next section we're going to be talking about word problems. So you need to understand what that max and min gives you. Okay, so I found the local extrema. Now I want to find intervals of concavity and inflection points. So intervals of concavity. So where this, remember, we're looking at where is it concave up and concave down. Another way of saying that is where is the second derivative positive or negative. So possible inflection points are going to occur where my second derivative is zero. That's where I'm changing from concave up to concave down. So if I set that equal to zero, where are my possible inflection points occurring? When x is zero, so I'm going to test, just kind of like the first derivative, I'm going to test around zero, okay? I'm going to test my second derivative, which is 6x. If I put in a negative number, clearly that's negative, so I'm concave down. If I put in a positive number, clearly my second derivative with a positive number is positive, so what that tells me is I'm concave up. So my intervals of concavity then, I'm concave up, right, from 0 to infinity, not including 0. I'm concave down from minus infinity to 0, and I do have an inflection point because I change concavity at 0. What is my inflection point? Well, it's my function evaluated at 0, so when I put in 0, it looks like we get 0. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So that's the second derivative test. And it, you need to look at your homework. When I give you the homework problems, I don't want you to follow the instructions in the book. I want you to follow the instructions I put on there. And so um, use the instructions I put, and I, I specifically tell you which derivative tests to use. Um, let's do one more of these, and then um, then we'll call it a day. Actually, let's go. Wow, that was a little crazy, huh? Um, but I hope that makes sense. So let's let's do, I want to do one more that might be a little bit more interesting. I want to do one that, that is almost seems a bit easier than the one we just did because it's not a cubic. But let's let's again use the second derivative test. Because sometimes the easy ones can be the ones that cut, you know, that get you. So let's use the second derivative test to find um, local extrema, local max min's extrema, and intervals of concavity. And inflection points, if possible. And I want to do this um, for, for a simple function. Okay, so I want, I want to do this for the function f of x equals x squared minus 4, let's say. Okay, a pretty simple function. But what I want to show you is sometimes, sometimes the simple ones can be a little tricky. So the first step again, I want to take the derivative of this guy. So f prime of x is 2x, and I want to set this equal to 0 because I want to find where my possible critical numbers are. So what are my critical numbers? My critical number is just x equals 0. Just divide both sides by 2. Now, the, what's interesting about this function, and you guys know what the graph of this looks like, hopefully, is that my second derivative is 2. Okay? So I'm going to do the second derivative test. What does the second derivative tell me, test tell me to do? Plug in my critical numbers. So what is my second derivative evaluated at 0? Well, my second derivative is 2 no matter what x is. So no matter what value you put in, you're always going to get 2. Now, is 2 positive or negative? Last time I checked, it's positive. It means I'm concave up. That means I have a minimum at 0. So I would say we have a local min of f of 0. So now remember, now you're plugging back into your original function. My min is a negative 4, and where does this occur? It occurs at 0, okay? Now, intervals of concavity. If I try and set my second derivative equal to 0, that absolutely does not work, right? So what is, let's think about this a little bit. I know I'm asking a lot in college for you to think. Look at what this is saying. f prime of x, right, is greater than 0. So, uh, excuse me, f double prime of x. Wow, Sarah, for real. Okay, f double prime of x is greater than 0 for all x. 
Why? Because f double prime of x is 2. So what is that implying? That implies that my function is concave up for all x values. So we're concave up from minus infinity to infinity. And I'm sure, as you of course know, this, what does the graph of this sucker look like? This is a parabola, right? x squared minus 4. So this is a parabola that's been shifted down 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, and it goes through 2, negative 2. Oh, you should pretend that that's a parabola. <laughs> Pretend that's a problem. Um, and what do you notice about this function? It is concave up, right, the entire time. So that makes sense so that actual calculus supports what the graph of this function looks like. I hope the second derivative test makes sense. If you have questions, please let me know. Some of these can get a little bit more complicated. Um, but as you go through the homework, as always, contact me if you have any questions.